Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, this is episode four of I Can't or I Choked Away a National Title. Again, I'm calling it that because I feel like I drew well enough at this tournament to almost definitely win a championship, and instead I finished 17 and 14, as I do almost every year at the Nationals. Um, and we're going to look at a game today against Howard Pistol. Um, I'm putting in my opening rack first, just to give you a little puzzle. I'm sure you all have those moments where you draw seven tiles that look kind of bingo-prone, and you're just hoping that your opponent puts out, out the right tile that you need. So I draw into A-E-I-I-R-R-T. And if you want to do a little brain exercise, uh, you can think to yourself, what tiles do I hope I get as a result of this rack? You can pause now, or you can wait. I'm going to give you a hint and tell you how many letters there are. There are six. All right, you can pause now if you want. If not, if you hate puzzles, that's fine. Uh, we'll see how this plays out. Howard opens with Kitty for 34. Uh, A-E-I-I-R-R-T. And I did, in fact, get one of the six letters I needed. Uh, somewhat counterintuitively, it is the I that I needed. Uh, that gives me the double-double retiarii for 82 points. So that's a hot start. I was hoping for that I. I got it exactly where I wanted it. Uh, fun bit of trivia maybe seven or eight years ago when I was in college, I was bored one day and I built a double-double power index where I just figured out how many sevens and eights are possible to play through a letter um, set between those two double word squares. So set in square eight E, where that I is. Uh, you would expect probably that an E is the most common uh, letter to double-double through. And in fact, I found that that was not true at all. In fact, I was the most dangerous. And then T, and then A, and then E and then L. So, you know, that's that's one thing to maybe think about is I's do give a lot if you put them at 8G, but they also tend to give back a lot if you put them at 8E. They give back more in terms of double-doubles and less in terms of parallel plays. So anyway, Retiaria comes down and uh, Howard responds with third. This is the beginning of a theme for this game where it seems like Howard has too many consonants on his rack over and over and over again. But uh, you'll take any break you can get in Division 1. Uh, I pull into A C D E I V Y post bingo, and there's a lot of plays. Nothing is is like a super standout play. You know, this isn't round three against Benji where every play I have is super obvious and ten points better than anything else. Um, but Vice is speedy player's favorite play, and just if you look at what the other top plays give up, KV puts a C in a triple triple. That gives up a triple as well. Dighty's nice and defensive, but holding A C E V is kind of annoying, especially when a uh, Bingo lines are available, so there's really no reason not to play Feist here, and that's what I liked it to do. Howard comes back with Envelops Natural through the E for 68, and suddenly we've got a game again. My uh, opening double-double is not going to lead to a runaway here. Uh, one thing Envelops does, though, is it really shuts down the board quite a bit. Um, there's not almost any bingo opportunity except maybe you can play eights through this E or this N or like through these letters, but, but this is not a bingo friendly board right now. And with a rack like A-E-L-N-O-U-Y, which I've just pulled, you have to make a philosophical decision. Do you drop something like Y-O and swing for the fences and try and bingo next turn? Or do you play more conservatively and just try and score points with something like Unlay up here for 32? And you can see on a, on a neutral board, speedy player tends to prefer the fishy type plays, right? You can see OE is a pretty terrible leave. Um, AEL and U is a roughly neutral leave. So go ahead and keep the better leave. Um, but this is a bingo or die leave. These are sticks. These are one pointers. And you don't want to get caught up in that on a board where you can't bingo. So uh, I elected to play Unlay here. And a, a Quackle simulation very much backs that up uh, and thinks that Unlay is a better play to make. Um, you can see that hops to the top right away very quickly. So unlay is the play that I elected to make. Howard responds quickly with fob over here for 25, and I pull into A-E-H-J-N-O-S. Uh, for those at home, there is a valid 8 you can play with this rack. No, it is not available to me right now, um, but there is a valid 8 you can play out of this rack. Um, that, that word is Johannes. You can actually see it up at the top already. I spoiled it. Um, J-O-H-A-N-N-E-S. Um, but I don't have Johannes here. I do have three good options, and one of them I didn't even see over the board live. I have John, I have Jean, and then the one I didn't see is actually right here. It's S-O-H for 42. 
Um, it is important to note that kittiest is not a word. I'm not 100% sure of that, probably over the board, but uh, no back hooks on kitties. Um, each of these plays has some pros and cons. Quackle actually prefers SOH quite a bit to the other plays. But both Gene and John um, set up an, a nice S hook right after YEN, and I'm holding an S, so I'm happy to do that. Um, I'm sorry, Gion would be the play you make here, not Gene. I don't know what I'm thinking. I haven't had enough coffee yet. Um, you would never play Gene over Gion, probably, simply because the A is a better tile than the O. Um, it's still simming higher, but that's because I threw Gion into the sim later, and we probably just drew some bad racks over and over out of there. But um, John and Gion are, are two plays that are worth considering, and then obviously SOH. Quackle really likes this play, um, but I think this is a fantastic turn to demonstrate uh, the idea of variance and, and how you can see variance in a Quackle simulation. So we can open up the simulation here, um, and you can see the opponent's next turn. SOH is quite a bit more defensive than those other options. Um, but if you look at our next turn, um, you can see John and Gian in terms of how much we're going to score are nearly identical, right? We're going to score 41.9 after John and 42.8 after Gian. Um, but I want you to look at the standard deviation right there. Um, standard deviation is a way of measuring the spread between the plays. Um, a high standard deviation means you're scoring very little often, but you're scoring a lot often. A low standard deviation means you're scoring right in the middle a good amount of the time. Um, with the play like John, J-O-H-N, we're holding A-E-S. Uh, that, that's kind of a score a lot or score a little type leave, right? All of those tiles score one point. Um, with a play like Gian, we're holding uh, AHS, and we've got a good spot to put SHA, or some word that's going to start with SHA. Um, so even though in terms of valuation these plays are the same, um, they, they allow us to do different stuff, right? Um, John is going to have a score a lot sum and a little sum. It's kind of a swing for the fences, whereas uh, Gian is a more conservative play. Um, we're, we're going to score more consistently. And then SOH, if you look at the standard deviation there, it's like, what, 10 or 11? Um, that means we're scoring kind of in the middle almost all the time. And that makes sense, too. The leave with SOH is J-E-A-N, and we're probably just going to end up dropping J-E-A-N right there a lot of the time next turn after SOH. So uh, this is kind of a choose-how-volatile-you-want-to-be type position. If you're winning, you obviously want to avoid variance. If you're losing, you want to embrace variance. And then your opponent factors into that, too. If you're playing someone who's fantastic at Scrabble better than you are, you want more variance in your game, and if you're playing somebody who's weaker than you are, or, or if you've got a big lead, you want to avoid that variance. This is a, a neutral game. I'm up by one. I'm about to go up by 30-something. Um, so I don't really care too much about variance. Um, Howard is rated around the same as I am. He's lower 1800s, I believe, and I'm 0-2 against Howard in tournaments, so that factors in a little. Like He, he definitely can and will beat me when he, when he has the opportunity. Um, I like to, to play John here. With the gift of hindsight, maybe I play Gian instead. Uh, I tend to avoid variance. Uh, I don't like, you know, letting the tiles decide who wins the game. I'd rather, you know, do it myself or, or get down to a close end game. Um, and SOH seems like a really solid play. That's that's a very hard play to find and make over the board because it seems so weird. The J is such a bad tile. But if I could go back and do it again, I'd, I'd yield to the duck and I would play SOH here. Um, I ended up playing John. Again, I'd rather play Gion, or especially SOH, but that's how I elected to roll. I did the uh, the whole variance, let the tiles decide, Jesus take the wheel type play. We'll see where that gets me. Um, the tiles are not getting Howard very far this game. He's dropped T-R-O-P through an O for 12 points. It seems like he might be fairly bingo prone after that. You know, E-R-S-T or something is a reasonable range. It could also be three consonants and a blank. That seems like the type of leave. Uh, one might keep after trop. Um, if you have seven consonants, you're probably just exchanging, not trying to fight through it for 12, um, especially not with a board open and play like that. So I don't know what exactly his range is, but I'd say it's it's decent, probably consonant heavy, three or four consonants, or and or three consonants and a vowel, or three consonants and a blank seem pretty off, uh, reasonable. Um, I let the tiles take over. AES was my leave. I pick up EGIT, and again, we're faced with a philosophical decision here of do we want to try and open the board and bingo is something like peeg, which takes the back E, peege, 
as well as a back S or, or gay um, or, or even something like page, you know, EIST is a fantastic leave that'll bingo pretty often. Or do we want to play more conservatively and just simply play a get out here? And we'll go ahead and get that simming for us. Um, I'll pull up the details. Y'all can see them all the time, but I can't unless I open up the window. Um, I ran a sim on this earlier and Gata hopped to the top after a couple hundred iterations. Um, this doesn't seem to be simming the same right now, but of course it's a very slow simulation. Um, you can see how much we're sacrificing in terms of bingo opportunity by playing GETA. We're only going to bingo about 20 or 21 percent, which is roughly average. Whereas with PEG or PAGE, we're going to bingo a lot more, and especially with GAE down at the bottom, we can bring our bingo percentage up to nearly 40 percent next turn. Actually, it says it's over 40 percent next turn. Um, but like. We don't need to bingo right now, and we really don't need the variance that comes with those plays. You know, if Howard bingos next turn, that'll be really sad for us because we probably can't bingo back. Um, so I like to, to avoid the variance and go with Geta. And, and you can see now, finally, after a couple hundred iterations, Geta's on top of the sim as well. This is the kind of play I love to make. You know, uh, don't let the tiles take over the game, take over the game myself. Um, so I play Geta here. Um, and Howard is going to come back with H-E-N-T for just 14 points. That makes me even more wary that he's probably holding, you know, three consonants and a blank. Um, that, that play actually screams, I'm holding three consonants and a blank. Or maybe something like E-N-T-S or something. But even then, I think that, that might bingo tenets or something. No, tenets is no good. Uh, but, but something like that. You know, he's probably pretty prone, three consonants and a blank, or three consonants and a good vowel. Or three good consonants and a vowel, I should say. Speaking of blanks, I have drawn into one. Um, there are actually several, several bingos that are available for us to play here. Miss Gru scores the highest, but you just don't want to give back that hot spot at 07 or 08, especially when Howard is fishing the way he is. We like to be a little bit more defensive. I, I decided to play Wiggers here for 77, um, forcing Howard to bingo like through this T or right there, which are going to be kind of tough to do. And if he does bingo with H-E-N-T-S, I'm going to get the big play back that Miss Grew would give him. So Wiggers seems to be the, the reasonable bingo to make there. Howard misses again on, I guess, his fishes or whatever he's trying to achieve right now. Again, like N-R-S-T or S-N-T blank seem very reasonable leaves for him to be having right now. But he throws down Snob pretty fast for 12. Um, I'm going to pull into C-E-I-I-M-O-U after my bingo. And this is a really tough turn because I've got Juice up at the top, but I've got a 102-point lead, and I don't want to open up the Juiced or Juicer or Juice's hook to allow Howard to hit a bingo for 100-plus. That's like a surefire way to take a, win, or a game I'm likely to win and turn it into a game that I actually could lose. You know, giving up 100 points when you're up 100 is not what you want to do. But there just don't seem to be too many other options this turn. Imbue is an even worse version of Juice, where not only does it give up 100-point bingos, it also forks the board. It creates a bingo line where I can, uh, Howard can come down the O column, but also he can come across the 15 column. So we just really don't want to make Imbue. A play like Myotic might make some sense, but still, if Howard bingos with snobs right now, it, it's rough for me, you know. I'm up 130, and then he bingos for 80 or 90 there. So I, I think even though Juice is tough to make, it's it's a play I've got to make here. Maybe there's something to be said for a play like Emic right here for 30 points. It knocks out the snobs hook. It's going to stop Howard from getting back into this game very quickly, barring like a freaky fluky bingo along the 14 column that reaches all the way to the double word. Uh, but it does hold IOU, which is pretty terrifying. You know, one an, an, another way to drop a game where you're up by 100 is to get caught up with terrible wrecks, like seven vowels or seven consonants. Um, so Juice gives me some flexibility. It opens the board, which I don't want to do, but I feel like I have to do given just the limited available options I have. And I'd probably dodge a bullet here. Um, I think Howard just kind of gives up on, on his attempts to bingo. He's got a 70-point play available with Zibit, and that forks the board as well because it's going to create the 15 row at the bottom but keep the O row open. So Zibit comes down, and I'm starting to sweat now. Luckily, I'm Matt Canick, and Matt Canick always draws the stuff he needs when he needs it, especially at this tournament. Um, and I pick up the R for Juicer. I also pick up an X, S for Juicer. Um, and I pretty quickly decide to play a rum up here, 
maybe there's something to be said for playing Muzo down at the bottom because there's only one remaining hook to juice in the Unseen Pool, and that's an S. But the S is, is probably stronger down at the bottom for him with Zibbits. Um, but I, I decided not to mess with it. A rum is the standard play. I've got the S to knock out Zibbits next turn, and a rum puts me up by so much that even if he does hit a bingo down at the 15 row, I can come back and, and probably win the game, especially holding on to an S. Um, Howard does not bingo, but he does something nearly as bad. He hits Aqua for 50, so suddenly, after it looks like he's trying to bingo three turns in a row with Trop, Hint, and Snob for 12, 14, and 12, he hits a Z for 70 and a Q for 50, and I'm starting to get worried. I pick up the Anisol wreck, A-N-I-S-O-L-E. I don't have a spot to play Anisol, and because I don't have a spot to play Anisol, uh, very quickly I just start thinking about how I can shut down the board. Now that's stupid, because I still have a bingo. I have Insolate, which is one of the highest probability eights there is. It's one of the first bingos anybody studies. Um, and it's not that I don't know the word, it's just that I didn't even think about trying to bingo. I saw how nice S-L-O-E was right here. It knocks out just about every chance Howard has to win this game. Um, and, and I just threw it down way too quickly. Insolate probably nets me some more spread, and even though it does set up a potentially dangerous spot um, underneath with like the F or something, like I don't care. I just bingoed again, and now I'm up by 110, so I just, I just win the game. But I'm dumb. I played too fast, or you know, I had an oversight, and I pa I missed the bingo, and that was not good. So bad job, bingo boy. Um, Howard comes down with G O A, just some kind of play to try and open the board. He's praying now at this point. A E I N S W Y is my leave. So that's N E Y S as a seven. A N Y A N Y W I S E. But I'd have no spot for that. Um, I had Sinewy here, or Sinewy here, I already say that, for 55. I decided not to play that because I didn't see any remaining bingos in this pool of nine tiles, A-E-F-I-L-M-O-O-X. Um, but I, you know, he did have multiple X plays that could come back under that, you know, O-X-O right there is an easy 35. So I decided to keep things smaller and to set up my S. Um, Whiny holds the S for Hayes, and I can come over here uh, down the 15 row and score quite a bit. So, so I played smaller here, and, and Quackle thinks that's the right thing to do. Actually, Quackle, if you run this on champ player, it gets really aggressive and plays City up here. I guess it thinks Howard will give me a lot of plays back almost all the time. Um, I, I would never make that play over a board. Whiny seems totally fine and reasonable to me. Um, I end up pulling into A-E-I-S-X, which means Howard has A-E-F-L-M-O-O. Um, and Howard sees that I have A-X-E-L right here available, so he drops his M quickly. Um, and I did something stupid here. I, taxis is a word I saw, and then I'm like, you can't pluralize that with an E-S. It's just T-A-X-I-S. So I passed on just going out um, and ended up playing, I guess, the second best end game I could have played out of this rag. And that's just dropping E-S right here for 25. Shouldn't have done that. Should have just gone out with taxis, but I'm not confident enough on the words to do it. Um, Howard re realizes that I have T-A-X-I right here and correctly blocks that with Woof, so he's playing an optimal endgame. Good for you, Howard. Um, and I have to drop Rax, and then he's able to go out for nine. So that's round four. Um, I think I played this one pretty well. You know, Maybe I could go back and play John a little bit better. Um, Juice was hard to make, but I'd still do it. And then obviously missing the bingo on this turn is just... Horrible, you know. No Division One player should ever miss in so late. I'm gonna check the probability on that right now. It is the number 23 most probable eight of all of the eights that exist. So that's terrible on my part. But the game was largely put away with slow anyway, so I don't feel super bad about that mistake. Although I probably should. I think in a different game state, if I had needed a bingo, if it had been closer, I would have looked to bingo a little harder. But with the lead, I'm just thinking close, 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 and and that's what I did. So there's game four. Um, I finally get to go eat lunch, as I wasn't able to do after round three. I was so disappointed, and we'll see how the afternoon goes. Thanks for watching, guys.